Hi, today I want to talk a little bit about the schedule. But before I talk about the schedule, I think it's really important that you know what your essentials are and that you have some kind of a family vision in place. You know, as a mom, there are so many things that we can be involved in with our kids. There's classes and lessons and play dates and sports and just a myriad of different activities that we could do. And so if we don't have some kind of a, um, a document even that tells what we're about and what our essentials are, it's going to be really hard when you see a mom over here doing an activity with her child and they're really excelling at it to not be like, oh, I want to do that too, when you already have a bunch of stuff going on over here. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we developed a family vision and a schedule and then uh, hopefully you can work through that at the same time. So if you have uh, this is part, this is one of the worksheets that I included with the course, and this is a family constitution basically, but it's a, it's a document that you could fill in to make a family vision plan. And if you don't want to use this, you could use a, just a blank piece of paper. Uh, some of my essentials I just actually painted on cardstock and put on the wall. So there's lots of different ways that you can record your essentials, but it's just so important that you have written down the important things that your family is about. So on the top of that worksheet, you just fill in your, your name, your family name, the last name, and then write down some of your guiding values and principles. So for instance, for our family, some of those guiding values and principles are um, being generous, living simply, showing hospitality, glorifying God. These are some of the basics that our family is about. So under that section, just write in take a minute and just write in what some of your guiding values and principles are. And then the next section talks about our mission. And so some of our mission is to, you know, demonstrate simple living. And some of our family mission is to be involved in helping people who are impoverished. So, you know, we go to Mexico and do mission trips and we have plans to go other places. So that might be part of, you know, part of your mission might be, uh, raising kids who are excellent at sports or raising creatives. So kind of write down some of your missions. So one, another one of our missions is we really love uh, singing and worshiping God. So part of our mission is that we've written down that, you know, we, we love to worship or we put a priority on that. And, you know, maybe your family's really into sports. So that might be one of your missions might be to be excellent at sports, or maybe one of your missions is to be um, you know, raise children who have academic excellence. So, you know, we really can't do everything perfectly. So we're going to have to focus on what our essentials are, what our priorities are. So that's where you write down the mission. And some of this might seem kind of redundant, but sometimes when we write things down different ways, they help those ideas get more cemented in our minds. So another one, it says things we strive to be. So those are kind of simple, you know, we strive to be kind, we strive to be loving, we strive to be generous, we strive to be hospitable, we strive to be diligent. Um, and then the next one, it says things we long to do. So before we get onto that, I just want you to take a minute, and I'm going to pause here, to write down just a couple of your guiding values, a couple of your family mission ideas, and then also write down some of the things that you strive to be. And you know, for us, I would usually pray about what these ideas are. You know, for you, you might want to discuss it with a, with a friend or a husband or somebody who you're close to and, and get some ideas from somebody else that you're close to about what your vision and what your ideas are. So now if you have finished writing down a few ideas just to get you started so you don't forget because sometimes we get busy with our kids and then we try to go back to it and we've forgotten. So the next section on here says things we long to do. And that one was really easy for us. There's so many things we're excited about. You know, we long to grow some of our own food. And that's something that we set out to do a long time ago. And we've done it consistently since then. We long to travel. And that's been a priority. We, there's a lot of things that we don't do as a family so that we can take interesting trips and visit other states or go to Mexico. We long to support missions, and so that's something we put a priority on, um, even if it meant sacrifices in other areas. So this is a, you know, really fun. Sometimes when you, you know, even if you need to, start on that section, because 
a lot of times it's easier to think about the things that you dream of doing than it is to think about your characters or your guiding values. So this should be easy just to jot down a couple things that you as a person long to do or you long to see your kids do or you know that it's on your family's heart to do. And then the next section says family member roles. And this is kind of fun because you can write down the name of each family member. So like in this, in one of those boxes, I would write my own name and then I would write, uh, you know, gardener and teacher and lover and mother and some of the things that are important for me to do as a human and as a wife and as a mother. Um, and then for some of my kids, like if I see that there are some giftings in my kids, this is where I want to write down, you know, I have one child who's really interested in inventing and writing. And so those are some things that even when they're little, you could kind of see some of those characteristics. And so I would want to make sure that I didn't get him too busy, for instance, in sports, that he didn't have the energy to invest in writing the book that he wanted to write. So as you kind of identify your children's gifts, even when they're little, even when they're little, they start to kind of you know, be really into art or be really kind to others or be really um, academically precocious. So when you start to see early on what, what things that your kids are kind of geared towards, you can jot those down in that section. And then, and then you're going to be less tempted because the problem is when we get, you know, like I said earlier, when we get into this mode where we're trying to keep up with everybody or we're trying to be the best at everything or, or, you know, like a lot of my friends do classical conversations, for instance. And they, you can start at four or five years old in classical conversations. So every year I kind of think, you know, is this for us? And maybe one of these years it will be. But so far, it, to me, would inhibit some other of our goals. For instance, um, financial stability. We, it would be a resource that I don't want to use right now. Also, the creativity aspect. I want my kids to have a little bit more time for creativity. So... For now, that it hasn't worked out for us, even though a lot of my friends love it. You know, maybe later it will. Uh, for us, music lessons are a priority, though. So whatever else is going on, I do try to make sure that at least somebody is taking a guitar lesson or taking a piano lesson so that we can keep growing in our ability to sing and, um, and write and play music. So it's really, really important. I can't stress it enough that you have written down some of the things that are important to you so that you can focus on them even when you're tempted to do something else. Um, another thing that we don't do is sports. You know, every once in a while we've gotten involved in a little community sporting activity, but in general, because one of our major values is to grow some of our own food and to live a simple life and live in the country, be close to nature, we have to be at home on Saturdays working and enjoying our property. You know, if our if that wasn't one of our values, then we'd sell the we'd sell the place, move to a suburb, and get involved in some weekend activities like that. So for us, those guiding values have made it very easy to say no to things that seem fun and that a lot of people are doing and loving and that aren't wrong. You know, I am not saying that any of these activities are wrong. You just have to decide what your family's about, and then focus on that because we can't do everything. Just not possible. And we'll get, you know, we'll run ourselves ragged. We'll make our kids exhausted if we try. So the next worksheet I wanted to talk to you about is this one. It's kind of more of just a family worksheet. Um, so this is like a planning for your week. And all your life with your preschoolers is going to go a lot easier if some other things are planned out. So for instance, this has a section where you can write your menu. And, and really, I would recommend... For breakfast and lunch, just have some standards. You know, don't try to be creative with those meals. You don't necessarily have time in this season in your life. So, you know, make make Monday oatmeal day. Make Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday oatmeal day if you need to. Um, you know, we really pretty much alternate oatmeal and eggs and cereal if we have it. And then on the weekends, we'll have a special breakfast. So it's, you know, there's a lot of areas in your life that you're going to have to put more effort into but if you can simplify some of these things, it's going to make your life so much easier. We do try to have a healthy breakfast, you know, something that's not too sugary, for instance, because kids just aren't going to function as well if they've eaten, you know, Fruit Loops or something for breakfast. You're going to see little behavior issues because often our kids do not behave well when they're hungry or when they're coming down off a sugar high. 
So I don't recommend. So then lunch is same thing, you know, make it simple, have staples on hand. Uh, and then dinners, you can get more creative. And even with dinners, you could have themes, you know, it could be Monday, Italian night and Tuesday, Mexican food and Wednesday chicken, you know, so if you can make some of these things standardized, it's just going to make your life run smoother. And, and, you know, for kids sitting down around a meal table with their parents is hugely educational. They're learning so much as they discuss things with you. Young children are learning about behaving nicely and about being with people and being considerate. So it's really important that you have a meal plan because it's if you don't, it's just too easy to run out and grab something that's not as healthy and gonna end up wrecking your budget as well. Um, another section on here is just thankfulness expressed. I loved the book A Thousand Gifts by Ann Voskamp and so we try to make it a priority to kind of be aware of, of the good things that are happening around us. Um, for this one, I have a verse that we want to memorize that week. And so this is more my personal memorization, but this also helps me get started with what I want to work on with the kids. And then this section is just any school projects, any special projects I want to do. For instance, if I know with the kids I want to focus on some kind of a unit, I can jot that down here so that I know what supplies I might need to buy and um, what we want to focus on. If I know, for instance, that I want to really hit the phonics hard, then this is a place where I can mark that down and work on that. Uh, special projects, that would be projects that are not related to school. So for instance, if I know I need to take the children to the dentist, or if I know that we need to make uh, an appointment with our tax person or whatever, all those kinds of little things that have to be done, but we get busy with our kids and we get distracted, and then forget to do it. So this is the special project section. And then for me, there are some things that I can tend to forget, like drinking water, for instance. That's one of those things that I can get busy and forget. So I have just little bubbles here that I can fill out for some of these things that are important to me to get done on a daily basis, but I don't really want to write down laundry every day. Like the laundry is always there, but um, if I just have it on a little reminder sheet, that helps. So then, for getting down to our preschool planning, I'm gonna show you the sheet that I made up for that. Really, for preschool, a lot of it is just so natural. You know, your kids are always learning. Your preschoolers, as they walk around the house, you know, throwing things in the toilet, they're learning about the properties of flotation and buoyancy, and I don't recommend the toilet as your um, as your science place, but it's an, it's, the thing, the principle I want to express here is that children are always learning. So, you know, it's not that you're going to have to sit down with them for hours a day and do preschool. And your, and your little ones are going to feel so safe and secure in your home. They're going to learn more readily often than if they are put into an outside of the home preschool. So don't feel like you're shortchanging your young ones if you're not, you know, doing a three-hour preschool program. But... If you do kind of have a plan in mind about what you want to work with them on, that's going to make it so much easier to address those things. So this worksheet has a place where you can write the week. And this will be a nice record also for you as you get um, your, as you work with your children to show what you have done with them. So um, here's a little preparation checklist. So, you know, you want to make sure your art supplies are organized. Make sure that you just, you know, the night before, just check through Make sure you don't have a bunch of broken crayons or old paint water sitting there. Um, make sure you have some kind of a healthy snack, even that they can help prepare themselves. It's such a good activity for young children to help prepare a snack. So kind of think about that ahead of time. Activity trays. So, you know, on the shelf, we have little activities that our kids can pull. And so kind of check those and make sure that they are set up properly. Table and floor is cleared. You know, if I go to bed and I leave my school table a big mess, it's really hard to get started the next morning because I, I have nowhere to work, really. Toys organized, so, you know, it's, this isn't something I do necessarily every day, but every so often I need to check and make sure, you know, are the Duplos all thrown into the Playmobil bin? And this is something, you know, working with our kids, this is even a good preschool learning activity. I just take the time to sit down with them and reorganize if they have been sloppy about putting things away. Healthy snacks available, I went, I, Talked about that one. Rest time scheduled. So, you know, make sure that you are aware that your kids need a rest and you might need a little break from them to kind of re, um, recollect your thoughts and whether you just sit down and 
uh, look at your phone for a minute or whether you read a book or just close your eyes for a minute. Everybody needs a few minutes to just uh, decompose or decompress, so to speak. Your book's gathered, so make sure that whatever read-alouds you're going to do or picture books, you have them together. And then make sure you're smiling. You know, kids respond to warmth. And so if you greet them in the morning with just like an exasperated look already or forget to look them in the eye, it's going to really stress their day out. They respond so quickly to our emotions. So kind of, you know, say a little prayer and, and just check yourself. Make sure that you are able to respond to them in a loving and exciting way. And then the bottom part is for the theme of the week. So um, this, you know, you're, you're going to have to check the preparation checklist really every night. But this part, usually you can just do one week, the week before or, or do it Sunday night or whatever. So theme of the week. So for instance, if you were studying the letter B, then you could choose butterflies to be your theme. And libraries have so many great books on butterflies. So you could choose one or two books and just read the same books each day. Uh, five in a row is one curriculum that focuses on picture books and they just pick one book and they really read the same book every day and then do projects off of that book. So that's kind of a system that I would recommend is just, you know, gather if you're, if you're going to do the letter B and you want to work on um, some science stuff, look for some books on butterflies. And this is another really beautiful one. It's called Handle with Care. But there's, you know, wonderful books at the library on butterflies and then you can focus all your little projects and the things that you do for the week around um, butterflies that's your theme so then you might have a book and so my my book would be this one handle with care and then also it's a butterfly's life and I might have also gathered some other books poem reverse of the week so I might go and look for a nice Robert Louis Stevenson book about spring or uh, a book about um, regeneration or transformation so they're a poem or verse that kind of fits with the theme also with my preschoolers we had made up a book that really just had like a b c d e f g it went through all the letters of the alphabet and each week we would add one letter to that book and it had a short little verse or poem that started with the letter of the week so if you can find a poem or verse that actually starts with your letter b that's going to be another way to reinforce your letter and then practical life skills you know if you if you want to focus that week on teaching your children flower arranging or simple sewing or glass cleaning I love teaching my kids glass cleaning because with a bunch of glass doors it's always a need so um, you know kind of jot that down so you make sure that you have a little tray set up with a small spray bottle that they can operate themselves and a little rag and then make sure you do a little instructing with them um, independent activities so that's where you want to have your little trays with activities for them so for instance with the butterflies life you could have um, cards that show the life cycle of a butterfly you could have little objects of different kinds of insects and cards with a beginning phonic sound you could have um, little you know pom-poms that they sort with colors um, a little sensory bin you could put different kinds of small insect objects in a bin of rice and let them sort through there and find them in that sensory bin you could have a tray set up with clay and some butterfly cutouts there's just so many different activities that you could put on the on the shelf for your independent activities and I highly recommend subscribing to the living Montessori now blog she was a Montessori homeschooler so she had a Montessori was classically trained in Montessori and then she has a blog now where she sends out activities and ideas for preschool, um, independent living, and independent activities and trays. So she has a lot of printouts for different activities that you could set up on your little shelf. And then also physical activity. It's important that your kids have some outdoor time and some active physical time. Often our preschoolers start melting down when they get exhausted or kind of overstimulated with books and things so they might need you to you know go put them on the swing and swing them or go you know run around a little bit hop all kinds of um kind of some more intense physical input like you know when you give them a hug even it gives them some sensory input that really helps them to calm down so if you see them starting to get a little bit crazy and they're not focusing anymore 
you know, go outside with them and do something different. Change, change your strategy. Don't, you know, with preschoolers, their attention span is really quite short. And if they get excited about an activity and they're really enjoying, you know, stringing beads on a string or doing a lacing and tracing card, don't interrupt them. Let them do it until they're finished. But if you see that they're really distracted and just starting to throw materials around, that might be time to take a break and take them outside or sit down and read them a book. So in, um, in one of the next episodes, we're going to talk some more about strategies for dealing with a child who's struggling. And then we're also going to talk some more about these practical life skills and independent activities. So thank you.